an apostle to the nations of the earth. Someone who has been a blessing to us in this house over and over again. With a shout, let's welcome this morning the president of Eternity Network International, Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Father, bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. We have come to receive. We have come to be changed. May your word come with power in Jesus' name. Please be seated. God bless you. Please be seated. What a powerful time of worship with Minister Dunsin. Hallelujah. One of the things I love about him is that he's not only a skilled and godly worshiper, he's a very sensitive and discerning one. He's able to sense what the Holy Spirit is doing per time, per season. John 16 and 24. Yesterday we began discussing this scripture, John 16, 24. He that told, ye have asked nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. I established a few things yesterday that I'd want to quickly recap. Number one is that you do not need results to have joy. You can have joy in the midst of pain. You can have joy in the midst of storms, but you need results evidences of the faithfulness of God to have the fullness of joy and in this scripture Jesus was speaking and he said he that told you have asked for nothing he says ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full so Jesus teaches us from this verse that there is a relationship between asking receiving and the fullness of joy asking receiving and the fullness of joy that we only receive because we ask and we began to examine what it means to ask because many believers do not know what it means when the bible says to ask i gave us three definitions may i quickly recap that number one to ask means to request information or to request an answer by saying or writing when you ask you are requesting for an information or you are requesting for an answer number two to ask means to invite or to allow into your space when you ask you are giving allowance that it finds expression into your space number three to ask means to inquire the price or the cost of obtaining a thing. There is a cost dimension to life. There is a cost dimension to the miraculous. So when you say, God, empower me, grant me the grace to be anointed. You're not just asking him to give you, but you are also exp exp uh, you are, you are opening up yourself to acknowledge the willingness to know the price component for obtaining that result are we together we established yesterday that when we ask we ask the god of heaven who gives unto men liberally and we establish that we are allowed according to scripture to ask for anything that pertains unto life and godliness there is no limit to what we can ask provided it is able to be a blessing to us and to advance the kingdom the bible gives us the allowance to ask mark, mark 11 and 24 what things soever ye desire when you pray it says believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them how do you ask we discussed this yesterday that we ask in prayer according to Mark eleven twenty four, and then we ask by faith. Remember James chapter 1? 
we ask by faith. We ask in prayer and we ask by faith. The Bible says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Seven, it says, let that man, whoever that man is, let that man not think he shall receive anything from the Lord. Just because you are talking to the Lord does not mean there is a guarantee that there will be an answer. The Bible says if there is no faith, even if it is God you are talking to, let that man not think. So it is not just the correctness of the person you are talking to that guarantees result. There must be faith. Your persuasion that is based on God's integrity and God's ability. Let's talk about receiving. This, you will be learning something this morning that will change your life. Please pay attention. Many believers do not know how to receive. Remember, we're discussing the fullness of joy. And we're saying there is a relationship between asking, receiving, and having the fullness of joy. How do we receive in this kingdom? What does it mean to receive? Write this down, please. To receive means to take or to get something that has been given. You only receive what has been given. If you carry what has not been given, it's not called receiving, it's called stealing. Listen carefully. Receiving is only receiving when you are receiving something that has been given. It is possible to take something that has not been given. It is called stealing. Is that true? And the Bible tells us there is someone who does that. The thief, he says. What makes him the thief? His ability to steal what is not given. So the Bible says that God is able to give us freely all things to enjoy. The only reason why we are receivers is because there must be a giver at the other end. Is that true? To receive means to take or to get something that has been given that's the first definition to take or to get something that has been given number two to receive means to come into possession to come into possession of anything at all you receive an inheritance you receive whatever it means to come into possession Are we still here? Number three, are you ready for this definition? To receive means to assimilate through your mind. To receive does not just mean having with your hand alone. To receive means to assimilate that idea and that concept through your mind. Your mind is also a receiver. To receive means to assimilate through the mind. Number four, to receive means to permit to enter your space. That when you receive a thing, you have given it allowance to find expression in your space. When you receive a visitor into your house, you open the door and you are telling that visitor, you are welcome, find expression in my space. How do you receive? The same way you ask by faith, primarily reception in this kingdom is also by faith. Both asking and receiving are faith dependent. You have to understand this. We receive in this kingdom by faith. And I told you that faith in this kingdom is based on two qualities of God. Number one, his integrity. Numbers 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together? So God is not a man. You've heard me say that God only became a man. But he's not a man. If God is a man, he must worship who created him. 
Are we together now? God only became a man so that he can help men to re be restored back to that God nature. But God is not a man. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. Herein lies an intrinsic weakness in men that men lie. They don't lie because they are necessarily evil. They lie because they are men. God is not a man that he should lie. And the principal tool for lying is your mouth and through words. You don't lie with your hand. Is that true? So when the Bible tells you that God does not lie, it means you can trust everything that proceeds from him. And I've told you that God only does what he says. If he has not spoken, there is no basis for him doing it. Genesis 21 and verse 1. The Bible says the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. He only does what he says and then he does as he has spoken. Are we learning now? So faith is based on God's integrity. His integrity is his unbendedness, his unbendableness. That God does not play games with people. If he tells you that I vow to lift you, he's saying you can peg your life and your destiny upon that word. Your assignment is to verify whether it is God that spoke to you. If it is God, stay there. His word will come to pass. Are we together? The second quality upon which the faith bible faith rests upon is his ability there are people who have integrity but may not have ability for instance you can meet someone and say can you give me a thousand dollars two thousand dollars and the person can say i am willing sincerely if i have it i will give you that person does not lack integrity but he may not have the wherewithal ability so the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 he says, can you give it to us, Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that is able, say he is able, prophesy, say he is able. Yes, he is not only willing, he is able to do exceeding. There are people who are able to say, but they are not able to do. I will give you a job. Well, it depends. They can say, but they cannot do real power in this kingdom is measured by the degree to which you are able to do what is said and god said let there be light and there was and he saw that what he said had happened and it was good are you learning now because if you know and you trust the one who speaks to you you do not have a reason to doubt him we receive by faith God can never tell you, listen, um, if you meet the way God blesses, he does not just bless according to our needs. He blesses according to his riches in glory. That means there are times that what you ask the Lord to do, if he does it, um, it is a mockery on his might because men can also do it. So he will do it in a way that it becomes clear that it is only God who can do this one. So that there is no confusion as to who did it. Are we together now? Yes. His integrity, his ability. We receive in this kingdom by faith. Trusting the one who has spoken. Trusting the integrity and the ability of the giver. So, if God says, I am able to lift you, if God says, I'm able to put a new song in your mouth, a song of praise unto our God, that many will see and fear and put their trust in him. Now, I believe that God is not playing games with me. I may not have seen it happen, but I believe in the integrity. How many of you have had people tell you, I will bless you and tomorrow come and meet me tomorrow has not come yet yet you are already rejoicing and jumping why because you trust the person who's who is who has spoken to you 
And even if the person disappoints you, you give him a chance again. He can call you and say, look, I really, you know that I, I wouldn't, but I, I was just busy. Can we make it Tuesday? And you do not say, I, I don't trust you again. You can still shift it patiently. When God speaks to you, I want you to know that he speaks because he has the ability to make what he has said come to pass. Are we together? Now, but my, my point of discussion, and this is where I really want us to understand something. To discern how God answers. Most believers do not know how God answers. How do I know God has answered me? How do I know that I have received primarily by faith? But you must understand the signs. God is so determined to see that you understand his ways that he leaves you with signs and tokens that lets you know that God has answered me. Please pay attention. There are many believers that continue to waste their time because number one, they do not ask correctly and number two, they do not even know how to receive. There are believers that whether they go to God or to a herbalist, they will still not receive because they don't believe in any of the two. You can go to God doubting. You can go to a native doctor and you are hoping it will work. And both of them will require faith. You have to place absolute trust. Can I tell you this? Everything fighting your faith, I curse it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I told you yesterday there are no guarantees in this life waiting for someone to give you a guarantee and say go I'm behind you defending you is a waste of time woe to him that puts his strength in a man when God sends you he sends you to go where only his power can take you you have to depend on him God can look at you and say go and build that house go and build that ministry go and raise that people and you are asking Lord where are the partners where are the people who would come in your mind you are saying no there is an uncle who is a senator somewhere and God says nonsense that's not how I work with people the signs follow you just go when I sent thee lackest thou anything not when you went when I sent you many believers respectfully speaking this our generation that is so scientific and sociological is the reason why we do not see the manifest hand of God we are too calculated we are too intelligent the risk of faith is what most people cannot take is the reason why we hardly command exploits our testimonies are very natural very scientific very human nothing in them really gives god glory is god challenging us this morning there are three biblical signs please listen carefully when it has to do with receiving and having obtaining things from god there are three signs that i want you to learn number one according to scripture the first sign that a transaction has been complete from heaven to earth is peace psalm 85 and verse 8 please write this and learn the ways of god the bible says i will hear what the lord will speak for he will speak peace unto his people and to the saints i will hear what the lord will speak peace is a language you must learn how to hear the language of peace peace is not just a feeling you can hear peace that in the midst of the storm in the midst of chaos you approach god full of fear not knowing what to do and in the midst of your prayer all of a sudden it's like another climate is created in the midst of that pain you find peace that surpasses all understanding it is not peace that is that can be explained with logic how come i am at rest seeing that my child is in icu something is happening in the realm of the spirit your spirit man has picked a signal of a transaction that is happening in the realm of the spirit peace is powerful the same way physically 
everything can be all right but the moment your peace is missing is 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 a bell in the realm of the spirit you don't wait until the physical realm becomes what is finished in the realm of the spirit the moment let me tell you this there are times everything can be all right physically financially health wise but you know that something is wrong with your peace i can't explain but I know something is wrong. Why do I look at my second son and I lose my peace immediately? It tells you there is something being fashioned in the realm of the spirit and God is taking away your peace. Peace is one of the emblems that represent the presence of the kingdom. Many believers are careless. They have ignored the language of peace, some to their detriment. Are we together? You can be doing a business that physically looks excellent. There is no human reason. There is nothing within the range of failure around it. And yet, this is not fear. There is peace that, that your peace is taken away. Every time your peace goes away, stop there. Right there. I don't care what you are doing. Do not continue. You will be about to recycle pain in your life. Many people do not respect the peace of God. The peace of God can build a garrison around your heart. Are we learning this morning? The first sign is peace. Philippians chapter 4, Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Philippi. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6. Please give it to us. Philippians 4 from verse 6. It says, be anxious. The word there is not careful. The word there is anxious. He's dealing with anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, here it is again, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says, let your request be made known. Don't assume God knows it. Let your request, let your asking be made known unto God. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep two things, your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus the peace of God which surpasses all understanding can keep your heart and your mind the sign of peace the sign of peace peace was such a deep mystery that the nation of Israel used it even in their greetings when you go to Israel today they greet you by saying Shalom that means I bring you peace I am an envoy of peace. Can I tell you this? There are many tragedies in the lives of people today that would not have been if they respected peace. The peace of God. The peace of God. There are times you wake up in the morning and for no reason, you just sense that your peace is taken away. Let me tell you what to do when your peace is taken away pray until another word comes from God to give you peace this is why he gave us the blessings of praying in the spirit how long do I pray until that spiritual condition changes you don't pray for five minutes and say thank you Lord uh -uh. and the moment you begin to pray a scripture starts coming God is speaking he shall keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed towards him and you can find rest because his word has come to you are we together you hear that they are retrieving people they are they are retrenching people and it's about to affect you and while you are crying wondering what will happen to my children what will happen to me you go to pray and while you begin to pray peace peace sometimes it can come in a song he knows my name that's what you hear in the place of prayer may not be a verse he knows my every thought and he sees each tear that falls and he hears me when Sometimes it will be just the line of a song. You don't need the whole song. The message is in one line. 
one line and you keep singing that song how many of you have had seasons where you sang certain songs for one month no other song can minister to you just a line of the song that does not make sense to anyone because there is a message and an anointing upon that line the assignment is to keep singing it until the day the grace that comes through that song ministers to you are we together in fact if you learn to walk with God and you understand these signs God can use both scriptures and songs to introduce seasons you can know that you are entering a season because he will back that season with a song it will not make sense to any other person except you is the reason why you see instrumentalists and worshipers have to be very sensitive because you must understand how to fetch songs in season because these songs are also tokens of ministration you have to know when to speak and to sing in season just because what you are singing is godly does not mean it will bless all the time it must capture what god is doing and saying per season is the reason why worshipers must pray prayer is not for prayer band people worshipers should even pray more than prayer department people has someone raised a song that you know that ah, ah where did this guy bring this from even if the song is Jesus, 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 you will be surprised you are not getting blessed by it. Not because there is the person is not touching something in the spirit. Discernment is powerful. You can raise one song and you see it ministering to people. It's like a bam coming from heaven. Sometimes it can be an old song that everybody has forgotten. From the wells of the spirit, you just draw that song and you see it ministering to someone. We're discussing peace. Are we learning? The peace of God is powerful. It does not make any sense why he gives you that sense of rest. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of inexplainable challenges. The moment you find peace, know that a transaction has happened between heaven and your destiny. Number two. Are you ready for this? The second sign is that God will give you, listen, 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 listen. God will always give you prophetic instructions that will demand action. This is the part of receiving. Believers do not understand. Every time you pray, you know that your answer has come. When a prophetic instruction that must demand action on your own part. All through scripture, midwifing miracles, midwifing supernatural manifestations were prophetic instructions that came from God directly or came from God through vessels to men. Are we blessed? For sake of time, let's look at two of them. John chapter 2. The first miracle that happened recorded in scripture according to John's synoptic account. Let's start from verse 1. The wedding in Cana. The third day was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Verse 2. We're reading to 12. It says both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So they were invited. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Watch carefully now. His mother said unto the servants, I have spoken to him. I know he's going to respond. Your assignment now is to be sensitive. I have done the speaking for you. But there is a way he answers. He is going to say something. Pay attention to what he says and be ready to do it. Are you getting it now? The mother said unto the servants, please go back to verse 5. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That means what he said is connected to what you desire. Verse 6. And there were set there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Seven. 
Jesus said, here it comes. Are you seeing how the equation works? I'm showing you receiving now from the Bible. He said unto them, fill the water pots with water. What did they do? They would have said, sir, you, it's like you, you, your mother spoke emotionally as a woman. Let me speak as a man. Wine is finished. We're about to be embarrassed. They obeyed quietly. Many believers do not discern the sign of prophetic instructions. Let me tell you this. If you ignore a prophetic instruction, you can recycle seasons of pain again like the hand of a clock. Fill the water pots with water and they filled them to the brim and they waited for another instruction. Verse 8, he said again. Notice, when he said the first time, he kept quiet until their first obedience was complete. They came to him and said, well, we've done that. And he said, draw out now. You notice the second instruction is riskier than the first. I understand, fill the pots. But now he's saying, go and embarrass yourself before those people. Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. The Bible says, and they bear it. Watch how receiving happens in the spirit. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted that was made wine and knew not whence it was, it says, but the servant which drew the water knew. Look at this. As they were going, water he turned into wine. You are singing it today. But that was not a song. That was not a song. That was a risk. Their lives were at stake. It's amazing how testimonies become songs only when they happen. At the point of that journey, it is not a song. Today, it can encourage us that he can turn water to wine. But think of the gentlemen who were about, and you know those days they just kill. No advice, no counseling, you are not seeing any counselor. The moment you disgrace the governor straight to prison, look at what happened to John. John was in the prison and they gave him as a birthday gift and he died. Are we together? They gave human beings as birthday gifts. Look, look at how those people lived. A prophet for that matter. prophetic instructions John chapter 9 first seven verses John chapter 9 please and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth why did the Bible have to tell us this man was blind from birth just tell us he was blind there is something he wants to teach us here his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? In other words, this is unfair. I understand the person who caused that trouble by himself. But what did this man do? Who seen that this man was born blind? Was it him or his parents? Verse 3. Give us verse 3. Jesus said, neither had this man seen nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. Verse 4, I must walk the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh, when no man can walk again. We read to 7, verse 5 now. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 6, watch this. When he had thus spoken, he's about to heal the man now. Watch what happened. He spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, seven, and said to who? Who is he talking to? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus said to the blind man, go. He didn't ask anybody to escort him. He said, go to the pool of Siloam which by interpretation sent he went his way therefore the Bible did not say they carried him how does Jesus act as if he's not love you put spittle on the eyes of the man and say Mr. Man there is a prophetic instruction you must honor that makes for your receiving stand up go to a pool called Siloam he had never seen Siloam Remember, this man was born, the Bible did not say he was blind when he was an adult. 
which one is Siloam now? Prophetic instructions require the grace of God to obey them. It may not make sense. But I'm showing you, most times we focus on the miracles. We do not study the process. Please keep that scripture now. Jesus is telling this man, go to Siloam. You ha I have mud in my eyes. Even if you were seeing a bit, the mud would have covered everything. And then he says, go to Siloam and wash. Here's what the Bible says. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing that's a miracle he went his way how about the widow in Zarephath remember famine was about to destroy her and the Lord told Elijah I have commanded a widow to feed you when Elijah saw her madam give me water and she rushed to bring the little that was left and he said, make me a morsel of bread. And she said, no, no, no. I'm just fixing the sticks to make the last one with my son so that I will die. And he said, no, you will not die. Make it for me. Prophetic instruction. In her obedience, she received and obtained supplies from heaven. This aspect of prophetic instructions is what many many believers prophetic instructions does not just mean from a man there are times god himself will give you instructions when they stood before jericho they would have been surprised if they tried to fight physically do you know look at the security system of jericho it was so powerful when the spies came they hit them and they went to meet rahab read your bible within a few minutes the report had reached the king with details about those who came do you see that level of security architecture that they smuggled their way in and met rahab and had discussions and within moments the report had reached the king with that level of accuracy if israel tried to fight them physically they would be surprised the bible says joshua began to inquire and an angel appears to him are you for us or against us he said neither I come as the captain of the Lord's army and he delivered a strategy he said here is the strategy this and that and that after circumcising all the men then they were allowed to heal and then an instruction came go around Jericho once every day with the priests in front and on the seventh day you will go around seven times and let there be a shout and the wall of Jericho sank and went down. We receive in this kingdom to the degree to which we are sensitive to prophetic instructions. There is nobody in ministry, whether in word or worship ministry, in business, the kingdom's way, who will tell you that they just rose casually. There must have been a point in their lives where a prophetic instruction midwife one season and another those who were sensitive to know the wealthy man came to jesus and said good master what must i do to be saved in other words there has to be a responsibility component just shouting and saying, save me will not save me let me know the role i have to play believers hear me if we do not learn the power of prophetic instructions we will keep praying and claiming things that may never happen in our lives never happen in our lives every time you pray in addition to the peace that comes be sensitive to instructions and for most of us we think instructions is just to carry money and give people no no for someone you can be praying and the lord will say this prayer do it every day for the next one week from 12 to 2 there is something i will show you that's it that's the instruction it may not make sense that may be the busiest season in your life and yet in in that childlike obedience as you obey god by the fourth day light will come in three hours that will make you a voice for the rest of your life I cannot, I cannot begin to tell you stories in my life where I prayed for certain things and prophetic instructions came. And at the instance of those instructions, they opened doors 
open realms, open levels of power. Is someone hearing? You can go to pray. Lord, grant me grace. I'm trusting you to open up doors for my children, my family. And God can give you an instruction. Carry a pack of wine. Go and greet this man. And in greeting that man, the Holy Spirit, who represents the voice of God, will cause the man to ask about your children. How about your children have not been seeing them? And you say, they are there. I say, I can imagine this economy. You know what? The Lord just spoke to me to give your children scholarship from where they are now until they are done with their PhD. And you stand there wondering. Then when you testify, people say you are lucky. That's why testimonies are important because it's not just the result we want to hear. We want to know what you did so that we can learn. The lesson is not in the result. Tell us what happened. Many people wait for the final result and shout and they miss out. Let us hear testimonies are a school. Every time you listen, don't just listen for the results. Then I did this. You will always hear that pastor said this and i did this the lord told me this it did not make sense are we blessed prophetic instructions that demand action prophetic instructions there are times you are praying and you hear an instruction go to the bookstore buy a book on faith buy a book on prosperity buy a book on the anointing that's it the answer to your prayer has come but well, most times you say lord I, what i need now is the, the the trouble that is is plaguing me i don't even have the time to listen and you see let me tell you it may never be about the book it may be about someone you need to meet in the bookstore god if god tells you go and meet someone at the end of it, you will buy the book and never really read. It was not about the book. It was his way of making sure you are there. Because as you are buying the book, someone else too comes to buy that book. And you say, oh, you are a pastor. Yes. Ah, we are from the same place. And then you find out that this person has the answer to what you are looking for. And the Holy Spirit tells you it was this connection. It was not about the book. The wind bloweth where it listed. John 3 and verse 8. You cannot tell where it goes and where it's coming. So is one who is born of the Spirit. That flexibility to hear God and to obey. You know, God keeps the, the prophetic instruction God gives you become stronger as your faith is built. There are times that God will give you instructions. Go and read your Bible. Read God's generals. And you will see the kind of instructions these people had to, to live by and obey. As your faith keeps getting stronger, one day, I'm not saying you should do it. You act based on that prophetic instruction. God can tell you even by 10 a.m. and say, come and stand in front of the gate of the church. Lord, what is this? But because you have built trust with him. You see that God will not tell a young believer who is just standing or just starting. It will discourage you. But there is a way you have learned to walk with God as you are living. God will send someone else too and tell him, I have sent someone. That is your next project of blessing. As you come to the church, you will find a gentleman standing with a blue shirt. And the man drives not knowing what he's doing. Suddenly here is a young man who is an orphan standing in blind obedience to God and the man says from today I've adopted you as a child and people come to say you are lucky or your man of God is just powerful you ignore prophetic instructions and it will make prophecy look like a lie over your life are you learning now one of the things we have to pray over is prophetic instructions prophetic instructions you cannot afford to live your life scientifically alone you cannot afford to live your life emotionally alone you don't have all that time for experiments remember the unit of destiny is time man of god 
You are not going to get a place for ministry by going everywhere and saying, is there free land here? There has to be a rhema word that comes as a prophetic instruction. Can I tell you, prophetic instructions have time redemption benefits. They can redeem your time. True story. I know a man who was praying and crying to God because of poverty things were not going well in his life and on top of the fact that he was poor there were still people looking up to him and warning him with all kinds of messages to make sure he prospers because he was the one who seemed to be like the light and he was praying true story according to him when he was praying he fell under the anointing and the only thing he saw in his vision was something looking like a tuba of yam and he looked well and he saw cassava true story cassava and he got up and he said what is this what does my pain have to do with cassava and he got up and the scripture that came to him was while the earth remains seed time and harvest i tell you this sincerely this gentleman got up by faith to cut the long story short he started farming cassava that did not make sense and became a multi-millionaire with it. He did not prosper because he was farming cassava. He prospered because he was walking on the word. If it be thou bid me come, prophetic instruction. If Peter just got up and walked on water, he would not only sink, he would die. A whale would swallow him like Jonah and then he would learn a lesson too. But because it was at the instance of God's word, even when he failed, Jesus took responsibility. You fell obeying him. Are we learning? Prophetic instructions. You will never be able to break out of that limitation. The risk of obeying prophetic instructions. Do you know how many times God has given me instructions in my life to empty my account? Empty my account does not mean reserve plus everything. Everything you know. Don't do it all until you hear God. Hallelujah. Prophetic instructions. There was a time as a ministry when we started, God gave that instruction. Carry everything like everything you know that is suicidal is a risk for any ministry in seven days what god did in seven days is a miracle that we just give him the glory for when you see results in the lives of people it's not because god loves one better than one what separates, if I would use that expression, men from boys, is the stamina to obey prophetic instructions. It's easy for us to have peace, but that instruction? There are people who have traveled around the world and have come and they will say, Apostle, God sent us to come and see you and just receive prayer. And in all fairness, sometimes I ask myself, Will it be easy for me to travel 17 hours, Australia, that is almost two days, just to come and meet a man of God? I respect him, but what is so special about the man of God? That is the power of prophetic instructions. And you will be surprised from that journey, the attacks that will happen on the way, you almost want to go back. It's because you are going to the other side with Jesus, and the spirits have seen that if you get to Gadara, there will be a miracle there. All kinds of things. The day you plan to come to church, you find out that everything has gone wrong. No light to iron your shirt. There's anger. The breakfast you don't want is what your wife gave you and you are angry. Discern. You are about to obey something that is opening the door. If you yield to the flesh, you have aborted that season. Someone lay your hands on your head and prophesy. Lord, the sensitivity to hear and act upon prophetic instructions please go ahead and pray in one minute we're wrapping up the sensitivity speak lord 
speak lord speak lord for thy servant hear it speak lord the next level of my life the next level of ministry the next level of kingdom influence depends on this prophetic instruction speak speak in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ are we blessed the sign of peace the sign of prophetic instructions that demand action prophetic instructions that demand action the third sign every time you pray be sensitive to the ministry of men be sensitive to the ministry of men I'm showing you how we receive in this kingdom there are three signs three signs that a believer must be sensitive to number one the sign of peace number two prophetic instructions that would demand you to take actions of faith number three the ministry of men Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 popular scripture the Bible says give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over read with me the next sentence shall men give into your bosom shall men give shall men give most of the answers that will come to us and manifest in our lives will happen through the ministry of men are we together there are few times when you will get answers directly from God to your spirit. Things like impartation. And even at that, God will raise an intercessor somewhere you do not know to midwife that operation. You've heard me say all blessings come from God through men to men. So if God says yes, and the man who has been anointed to midwife your blessing says no, your yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. The ministry of men most of us do not understand and we do not discern the ministry of men when the Bible says what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him do you know what that means it means Lord what did you put in man that even man is not aware of when answers come to you answers come captured in men God personifies answers to prayers in men The same way Satan personifies destructions in men. Most of the destruction that come to men happen through men. Most of the blessings that happen to men come through men. So I am praying, Lord, open the door for me in Lagos. Open the door. Open the door. This gentleman is well dressed in suit. Can you be the answer to my prayer? Come. Somebody is answering my prayer now. I'm praying now. Watch this. The moment you begin to pray, Lord, I receive answers. Favor is coming for me. In the name of Jesus, you need sensitivity. Come. I can pass this man. Pass me. This is my answer. The answer is coming through a man. Through a conference. The Holy Ghost made sure we sat together all through that conference. And they said, turn to your neighbor. And I was not sensitive to understand that this neighbor is not just a congregant who came to sit down. It's an answer to my prayer. The Holy Ghost moves the man of God to say, ask your neighbor, what do you do? And when he was asking you, you were praying in tongues and turning your face and ignoring him. And you did not know. Are you learning something now? It is the reason why when you don't pay attention i'm not done my friend we're doing one more time yeah thank you thank you so much answer to prayers that can be the brother of the person whose job whose office you have applied to work and god brought the person close to you you see unbelievers understand this 
with with mastery unbelievers know the power of connection through men when they want to get you and you are not responsive they will find everybody you respect they must find a way into your space by force your wife your son your daughter everybody the ministry of men and now this man comes and God connects you to the person and in a moment your life changes like this can I tell you this what is a prayer request for you is within someone's power to make happen the land you are trusting God for is not coming from the sky somebody is currently in possession of it right now the job the opportunities it is amazing how easy your life can be when you understand the ministry of men may God bless you and who knows maybe God brought him now to sit in front so that I can use him and give this example what do you do I, well I'm, I'm seeing this let me surprise you now this man I'm looking at him and I'm seeing a deep freezer hey. this is what I'm seeing Huh? What is a deep freezer? Can, can I? I sell frozen food, sir. He sells frozen fruits. You make them. I buy in stock and sell to and retail, do retail and wholesale. I buy from cold rooms and sell to. How long have you been in this? Two years, sir. You believe your life will change? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, may that grace change your life forever. In the name of Jesus. Just like that. This is how our lives... This is a classic example to what God can do. Just like that. Now, only God knows what this guy has been praying in this conference. You, you don't have to be in front of, that's not what I'm saying. But you get what I'm saying. How do I stand, I'm looking at someone and just joking. And yet God is not joking. I see a deep freezer and he says he sells frozen fruits. And that's it. Some of you, even because of this, you will patronize him now. Can I tell you this? It is only as hard as ignorance makes it. Hear what I'm saying? This can be a prophetic word for someone. It is only as hard as ignorance has made it. It's not so hard. You can be in the worship ministry, for instance, you are struggling, you are not finding any visibility, and in prayer, God can give you an instruction and say, listen, for instance, to 20 of minister Dunsin's songs and carry a seed and go and meet him and so that can be an instruction and he said what is there I'm a music director or I'm, I'm a musician is a musician that's all right you are right except that you remain in that position for a very very long time very long time hallelujah most people do not know how to receive pay attention to the ministry of men I was in a season of my life where I was trusting God for a higher level of grace as far as answered prayers is concerned and I prayed I said Lord I thank you for what you are doing but I want to see greater results of answered prayers in the lives of people and all of a sudden God granted me grace one thing led to the other I found myself in Daddy Gio's prayer room alone and when you find yourself there, you can easily say he's a man. We're all human beings. That's how foolish people think and remain where they are. I lay down there and I was not saying, God, give me tea and bread. That would be a stupid request. It would be an insult on your knowledge for many years. I said, Lord, the grace and the covenant of many years upon this great general, would you grant access that by honor and by mercy, let this grace come upon my life. I knew God answered that prayer. The devil in hell knows that prayer was answered. Listen, most people don't come out to tell you what happened behind the scenes. But make no mistakes. Anything exceptional has an explanation. 
are we together now and let me pray for someone in the name of Jesus the things that have refused to work in your life by the God of heaven here at this conference I speak and I decree and declare over you an end comes to hardship in your life the prophetic instruction you need to hear in this season some of you even right now as I'm speaking to you the Holy Ghost is giving you clear instructions about certain things don't be emotional but let me tell you when he speaks water can turn to wine not when you want wine when he speaks when he speaks minister Dusin said when he speaks everything obeys he said when you show up everything will adjust when he speaks I always look forward to prophetic instructions Lord what are you saying for me what are you saying for the ministry in this season just sitting and doing nothing and expecting things to change is a complete waste of time believers hear me for many of us you are long overdue for certain seasons you just sit down and say God look on me and he says no no understand my ways you can get angry and shift seasons there are some of us answers have been piling up in the realm of the spirit since 2016 2017 none of them has happened in your life yet in your visions you see this is the thing about the prophetic God uses dreams and visions to show you what has happened you see in your dreams is already done you are already in the facility you are already having this why won't it manifest there is an instruction midwife in you and if you can understand that instruction are you learning prophetic instructions and then the ministry of men please do not ignore men I know that the the greatest pain in your life has come because of men but the greatest blessing under the earth under the heavens will also come through men don't ignore men no some pastor manipulated you yesterday and you say every man of God is a cook and a criminal you will suffer for nothing because in the midst of your pain the grace you still need is hidden in men are you learning now the ministry of men this is the reason why God through your pastor by the privilege of God's grace brought us here as privileged vessels to speak over your life this is the final conference I may not have the time to pray for the sick and to do all of these things but honestly I want to speak over your life for many of you in my voice you will hear the Holy Ghost telling you specific things for some of you he will tell you after this conference go on a three-day fast wake up every night do a personal vigil go carry a notebook and carry a piece of paper and your Bible there are things I want to tell you about the next season of your life don't allow slumber cheat you you must wake up and sit down for some of you the instruction will be play worship songs from 12 till 5 let him find you at the place of obedience and you will marvel and wonder at how seasons open for you this is how we rise in this kingdom John 16 let me wrap up as we pray 24 he that told you have asked for nothing now you understand this scripture <laughs> And then learn how to receive too because I desire for your joy to be complete hitherto you have asked for nothing he said ask and you shall receive that your joy might be complete hear me when a woman is pregnant As she goes to visit the doctors when she gets to the final moment of her delivery notice she does not buy the baby things on the day she will give birth 
except she wants to give birth in the shop there are we together she prepares because she knows something is coming the woman has not seen the child but she already bought everything and then the husband begins to prepare making sure there's foil in the car because at any time it will be a risk to drive on reserve at that time because he knows that a season i don't know the doctors have given me an idea of the edd some of you hear me i'm speaking prophetically now right from towards the end of last year you've been having it in your spirit that i'm coming to the end of a season the signs are there you've you've started seeing it in your dreams a few people have even prophesied to you in your career in ministry even at certain levels of the anointing you have been working in the prophetic you have been working in certain graces but you are sensing it's like a woman in travail please listen this is why many preachers they don't backslide but they don't go forward too because they don't know how to change seasons they remain there you know that this is the same grace the same everything no growth The ministry of men God hides his power in men he hides his possibilities in men when God wants to bring answers to your prayer it will come through men it truly comes through men one prophetic declaration one impartation of grace upon your life and you can walk out a brand new person into a world of possibilities beyond your wildest imagination all of these limitations you see can change the bible says hear me it says for the things that are seen are temporal the financial situation the job situation the health situation temporal but the things that are unseen i just sense that god wants me to speak first this morning to those who know you are sensing in your spirit some of you as a couple you have started you started having the same dreams god has been using every sign to tell you seasons are ending build the stamina for the next season of influence build the stamina for the next season in your business when you are not sensitive you will respect your insensitivity and leave you there and you find out that everybody is rising except you ye have not because ye ask not let me act as a prophetic midwife this morning to speak over people who are at the bridge between their yesterday and their tomorrow financially spiritually some of you even with the operation of the anointing and the gifts of the spirit you have seen the help of god in a measure but that is not the best of god for you pastors maybe in ministry god has helped you but that limitation that embargo and yet you keep seeing in dreams you keep seeing in visions that god is telling you you have encompassed this mountain long enough it's time to rise in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god by the power that raised christ from the dead for everyone who is here those following online specifically for those who are coming to the end of seasons prophetic seasons financial seasons in the name of jesus have you heard of this proverb that a nation is born in one day he said but as soon as zion travails therefore i prophesy the grace that moves you to a new season may that mantle right now let it come upon your destiny men and women in ministry may that grace that escorts you into new seasons may it come upon your life now business people May that grace come upon your life now. Hear me. Everything.
something fighting your peace that will not let you hear what God is saying and discern how he's answering you I cost that limitation right now help them please I cost that limitation in the name of Jesus Christ number two whatever is blocking your hearing so that today you think God said this one of the ways that Satan confuses believers is to ride through your sensitivity and confuse you using dreams confuse you using voices many of you have had conflicting voices over everything one man of God said this another one is saying that one dream is saying this these are manipulations of darkness to confuse your certainty I pray for you now the veil in your eyes and the haziness in your hearing may it leave you now in the name of Jesus hear me number three I'm speaking to you by the Spirit there are people when God says move forward the devil will speak like God and say no move backward God is saying stay in Lagos but there is a voice now that wants to destroy your destiny and he said no leave Lagos go to UK or go to America it looks like it is marketable it is only when he sends you that he defends you I pray for you confusion in hearing confusion in discernment let that confusion come to an end now and for those who have already taken wrong steps sincerely because of confusion the devil manipulated the innocence of your of your yieldedness to speak to you things that moved you away from the will of God I prophesy to you right now let there be restoration with precision hear me God gave Moses an instruction he wrote on the tablets the Ten Commandments Moses returned and anger made him to lose a season he scattered it on the people for a justifiable thing he went up the mountain again and his punishment was that he would carve the rocks by himself I want to pray for you because many of you let me tell you this when the devil sees that you are carrying precious things he will use the manipulations of the flesh anger offense these are the things that abort seasons without you knowing all of a sudden everything around you seems to look for your trouble why is my wife behaving this way why are my children behaving this way it's an attack it's not about your wife or your husband it's an attack on what you are carrying for the season I pray for you the grace to not be offended the grace to maintain spirituality and focus as you transit through seasons may that grace rest upon you now hear me in the Bible there was the story of an old prophet and a young prophet one thing the Bible acknowledges that they were both prophets you have to be careful just because a man is anointed does not mean he's carrying your word be careful anointing does not mean instant results I can be anointed but I'm not the one carrying the now word for you and if I force myself I will speak out of the flesh you will receive it because you believe I am of God many people have been confused today by sincere people There is a word that you find. There is a word that is sent. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. Men are sent to men. They don't just come. Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost. That means there were some that were not given to him. 
when God came to Samuel he used the voice of Eli Eli heard the voice of Samuel and he ran to Samuel listen I want to speak to you because many of you are masters at hearing all kinds of voices your life is a product of that confusion today anything that speaks you are willing to listen and this one will say go here go there and your life is in complete confusion some of you were doing jobs that were well but you were counseled wrongly you left those jobs in the name of faith and now your life is paying the price because God was not there I'm not condemning you this morning service is to help us it is dangerous to hear what you think is God and yet it is not God because it is at the end of the journey you will find out that I've been wasting my time can I pray that prayer for you again the prayer that opens the ears of a man and opens his eyes let me tell you this the prophetic and the apostolic ministry is powerful but you must cry to God develop my hearing you develop my seeing you if your life helplessly depends on prophets and apostles you are in trouble especially in this end time because prophets and apostles are men they are human beings they are also students in the school of the spirit they are learning and when they grow higher they will not see you to say sorry that thing I told you yesterday it was a mistake you are the one who grows in that confusion I pray for you again if there is anyone here who is helplessly a victim of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry I'm not saying they are wrong God has anointed us for a reason but let me tell you more than men more than prophets and apostles apostle Joshua Selman the most important thing beyond the speakings and the things we tell you the integrity of scripture it is written is greater than I said are we together now there are many believers today the reason why it looks like God has not answered your prayer is because until an apostle or a prophet speaks you cannot move that is a dangerous doctrine the person who is speaking to you has been granted the privilege to work in these offices but I need to tell you the truth are we together the prophetic and the apostolic is powerful provided it does not become idolatry many people's lives have been pegged indefinitely destinies kept just at the will of individuals no sir there are people today who cannot take on a journey they can't travel until somebody says go I don't mean giving you permission maybe like no don't live that kind of life where then is the excellency of the scripture that you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in what happens to you if the man of God is not there is the reason why we men of God are dying of high blood pressure because we have mentored people to call us day and night rather than leading them to God do you know what it means for thousands of people to call you you don't have time for your family you fail in every other area of your life please don't I hope you understand what I'm saying don't say what I am not saying I'm not criticizing the apostolic and the prophetic ministry I'm only bringing balance and perspective many believers today would have done business with the integrity of the world they would have been multi-millionaires today except that they went to a prophet or an apostle and say wait I'm praying five years he's still praying your children are growing school fees is increasing but your life and your wisdom is going down at the mercy of someone's will God does not work like that my dear people if there is anybody here that is a victim of that captivity I join my faith with your pastor we release you from that bondage now we release you from that bondage now in the name of Jesus Christ you need high level sensitivity having said that let me also balance those who have because of the pain they've gone through they say don't trust any man all these people are just noisemakers who are just looking for money can I tell you the truth you ignore the prophetic get ready to suffer let me bring the balance now when Jesus was born in his entire earthwork, there were three prophets that he encountered number one 
was Simeon the prophet. Number two was Anna the prophetess. Number three was John the prophet, who you call the Baptist. Jesus, your Jesus had to go through that trinity of the prophetic for his life and his ministry to thrive. Even in heaven, the foundations of heaven is built on the apostles and the prophets. Christ being the chief cornerstone on earth here, that's how he built the church. Don't ignore the prophetic ministry. Don't ignore the apostolic. Let it just be brought to balance and perspective. One prophetic voice over your life can open up a world of, of results in your life that can surprise you. I'm a product of many prophetic voices of fathers that have spoken and blessed and blessed and sometimes it may just be a casual statement the Lord bless you may the Lord lift you may the eyes of your enemies not see you and you are just saying amen amen in a childlike way and yet there is a throne in heaven that is backing that word so let me declare over your life as we wrap up please every prophetic word that is coming I want you to believe it I know that several prophetic words have come here I want you to believe it in the name of Jesus I decree and declare for your going out and for your coming in be blessed be blessed be blessed hear me everybody who fights you before your eyes they go down Let me speak over your life. Whatever belongs to you that has been authorized in the realm of the spirit to come to you, but by demonic manipulations is being blocked by men, by systems and by structures. Cabros Ketelekepata, I command that release to you now. Job said, the Lord will deliver you in six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. Men can use their tongues like, a, like a, a whip and trap your destiny down. Anybody who spoke over your life, even if it's your biological parents, maybe because of your past, and they said it would not be well with you, I stand by the privilege of priesthood and I declare every negative speaking hanging on your life hanging on your destiny let it roll away right now in jesus name master we have toiled all night he said nevertheless at thy word i pray for those who have labored you have toiled in business in ministry and it looks like the results that should follow your sacrifice is yet to appear in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God I pray for you after this conference go back again and win go back again and win go back again and win go back again and succeed go back again and rise my Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. I know that from a human standpoint, the times that we're living in right now, in our nation, in Africa, they seem to be challenging times economically and otherwise. But it was in Egypt that there was darkness in one area and there was light in Goshen. I pray for you. The grace that exempts men from the catastrophes the exemption strategy the exemption blueprint of the spirit meant for your preservation in the name of jesus the same ark that preserved noah and his wife their sons and their wives may that the mystery of that act preserve you be preserved through famine be preserved through lack in the name of jesus christ hear me the bible says once upon a time samaria was ravaged by a famine to a point where women were eating their children 
your children represent your tomorrow your child represents your future you may laugh at the women but many people have eaten even their grandchildren when you eat your future through lack of discernment through delayed gratification you are doing the exact thing that was done in Samaria women boiled their children and ate because they were not patient to leave the children to grow to help them impatience is one of the mysteries that can help you eat your child there are people today who should not have been poor if only they were patient to not eat their children let me pray for you whatever has left your life either through mistakes through carelessness some of you financial opportunities some of you strategic relationships let me pray for you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be returned one more time prophesy to yourself everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me hear me i'm wrapping up the bible gave us a parable that there is a possibility for men to find what they lose good news that once upon a time jesus giving this parable that a woman had a precious coin and she lost it in the room she knew it was in the room but did not know exactly where it was that room is the earth you know your blessings is still on earth but where exactly it is the first thing she did was to light a candle the second thing she did was to carry a broom and she began to sweep when she found it she had joy that what was lost was now found can i tell you one of the secrets of joy is restoration when the prodigal son came back home what did the father do the father put a feast and rejoiced because that which was lost is now found can i pray for you many of you have lost things you've lost opportunities i hope you are not tired of receiving you have lost opportunities you have lost levels in the spirit you have lost time but i want to pray for you there is a grace that restores in the name of jesus i'm praying for you that between now and the end of february 2022 let it be recorded in the realm of the spirit that everything that has left you that is responsible for your current pain and shame and limitation february hear the word of the lord become a vehicle for restoration become a vehicle for restoration become a vehicle for restoration in the name of jesus let me pray for your spiritual life please look up haven't prayed for things many of you in truth when you look at your life right now it's as if you are not even saved i'm not doing an altar call yet i'm talking of spiritual fire because if all you receive is things you are not really receiving are we together your generation will only pay attention to you to the degree to which God is manifest in your life. The anointing of the Holy Spirit was given as an advantage. Listen to me. The power of the Holy Spirit resident within a human spirit is the one factor that is responsible for exploits. A generation will not pay attention to you just because you want them to. There is an investment and engracing from heaven that must come upon your life. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. This is a generation that downplays the investment of the spirit. Just because there are all kinds of technological things, they are not options. 
the anointing of the Holy Spirit stands exclusive. You need to be filled with the Spirit. The wisdom of God, the power of God at work in you. Especially for those who are called co-laborers in the gospel. You cannot afford to preach a gospel that does not have power. Power is not falling down and standing up. Power is transforming the lives of people. Are we together? Your spiritual life. There is a grace that drives men to the place of intimacy with the spirit. Our generation is in a hurry. We are in a hurry for everything. Gone are the days when people shut themselves and say, do not disturb me. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life. I'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life. Can I tell you, the secret to visibility is to be hidden. The more you hide and stay with him, the more the nations see you. This each and appetite for fame and to be seen is what keeps punishing us again and again. When you want to be seen, stay with him. Stay with him in prayer. Stay with him. It's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out up, pour out our praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, oh. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise, pour out my praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise to you holy. That's what you do in worship. Great are you, Lord. Listen, do not let anything I'm giving you my final charge this morning. Whatever has stolen the place of intimacy between you and the Holy Spirit has attacked you. Forget about the money you lost. Listen to what I'm telling you. The Holy Ghost is calling men. To a deeper level of fellowship fellowship beyond fame fellowship beyond miracles fellowship beyond good sermons fellowship beyond greek and hebrew this is the secret to a life of exploits you don't just come and receive and go you don't know me by looking at my hands you know me by knowing my heart my son give me your heart he says and let your eyes incline in my ways listen don't just sit admiring people that god is using greatly i told you one of the ways we ask is by knowing the price component what does it take to be anointed lord what does it take for a generation to hear my voice what does it take for my songs to go to the nations it takes more than writing it it takes investing a presence on it what does it take for my sermons to go far? It takes more than Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, there is an investment of the spirit that science cannot mimic. Some of you here, when you started with God, this is not how you started. You started with the purity of passion. When God began to lift you, your prayer life went down. Everything in your life, your consecration went down. Your passion for him went down. He's calling you right now. Let this lead me to an altar call. I made an altar call yesterday. But the altar call is not for you to come out yet. The altar call is for you to pray. You are going to do the prayer yourself in one minute. Lord, restore my fellowship with the word. Restore my intimacy with the Holy Spirit. 
this flimsy excuse of no time take it away from my life someone is praying we're done in one minute cry to the Lord it's your breath in my lungs so I pour out my praise pour out my praise it's your breath in my lungs so I pour out my praise to you only great are you Lord great are you Lord great are you Lord listen go back to your house and recreate a space for you and the Holy Spirit again go back and get a flash drive put those worship songs like you used to do again go and get a correct Bible again go and buy a notebook and name it after you and the Holy Spirit again go and get writing materials again set your alarm clock the way you were doing before again I will not end this conference without charging you you want the fullness of joy it says restore unto me there is a relationship between joy and restoration the joy of my salvation when Samson lost his hair he stood before the pillar and cried and while they mocked at him and the God who sent him the hair began to grow can I tell you this God is charging us there are preachers you need to go back for a retreat there are business people you need to shut down business for a few days you will not die you will not lose stay with him Lord your boy is here again the last time I was here was 2016 I am still back at least the prodigal son came back beware of the things that eat up your time the quest for money the quest for fame the quest to promote yourself except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over the city preachers thank God for traveling around but we must obtain grace from God to find a way of staying with him until that signature of his presence and power until that spiritual intercourse between you and his majesty happens Let me make an altar call now. I apologize for the time. There are people here. Probably you came yesterday. Some of you came this morning. As we wrap up this conference, many are following from across the globe. You've heard what I just said. There is something called the joy of salvation. The joy knowing that you have peace with God. Then you have the peace of God. He is called the Prince of Peace. More than just a restorer. More than just a deliverer. The Prince of Peace is beckoning on you right now. I'm going to count one to five. I know there is someone in this service. Inside, the overflows outside. Who is saying, Apostle, if you give me a chance, I want to come to the Prince of Peace. I have met the deliverer. I have met the healer. I have met the blesser. But I want the Prince of Peace. The one who will grant me peace wherever you are i'm going to count one to five run like there's fire on the mountain don't wait for anyone to be the first person to come win that war this morning i count one to five run to him one celebrate them as they come run to jesus you have met the one who gives miracles you have met the one who gives signs but the Prince of Peace is calling you. Come to him. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. The true source of joy. Those coming from the overflows, please allow them come. Rush and come. We'll wait for you. And those of us who are here, while we're clapping for them, please be praying in the Spirit. Let's all be praying in the Spirit in one minute. We're done. This is the final session. Household of David, are you praying? Come to Jesus.
he's able to save even to the uttermost apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved i'm a nice person can't remember doing anything evil but i'm not sure that i've i've given my heart to jesus come join them join them very quickly join them quickly god bless you young and old everyone following in your home following in your office wherever jesus is giving you a chance to experience that joy that is unspeakable and full of glory hallelujah i thank every one of you for honoring this altar call those of you who are here in front i join the angel over this house to celebrate your attentiveness remember we spoke about prophetic instructions midwife in your joy is an instruction in this case a call to surrender everything a call to exchange your life for his life your weakness for his strength the turbulence around your life and destiny for his peace for indeed he is the prince of peace lift your right hand if you can those of you in front some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears jesus is calling you there are people here who are saying apostle i've i've given my life to jesus but i need restoration 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 restore unto me i once had it restore unto me the joy of salvation please i'd like you to say this prayer with all your heart don't just recite a poem let it be a prayer from the depth of your heart say after me loud and clear lord jesus, lord jesus. i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that you are my Savior you are my Lord and you are my King the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever i am a child of god amen i decree and declare by your confession that you are recipients of the life of god the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life in the name of jesus from today you walk in victory you go from glory to glory and from grace to grace in the name of jesus christ amen and amen Please, I'd like you to follow the counselors. There's a counselor that is waving his hands to you, waving the placard. Please just follow him just a minute and you'll be back. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. And I have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you may lead I will go I decree and declare in the name of Jesus all the blessings in this conference from Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday yesterday and this morning by the power that raised Christ from the dead first for the membership of the household of david and then all who have been part of this conference i stand in faith with the angel over this house and i declare every blessing every prophecy that has come as a result of this conference may it be captured in your life in the name of jesus christ you will only keep going from glory to glory in jesus name i pray Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Okay. Praise the Lord. Now, the offering was to be done before I would come up, but because Pastor had requested that I would just come up, um, how do we do it? It will be projected. Okay, so 
we are going to take the offering now please bring out your offering your tithe whatever prophetic seed I pleaded that he stands with me here so that we can declare over your life let's do that very quickly let me challenge you for some of you God will give you instructions to sow into this word go ahead those following online um, there are there are account details that are projected for tithes and offerings for the building project and for partnership for those who will want to be part of what Jesus is doing in this ministry if you're yet to get an envelope you can wave your hands the ushers can see you and then please ushers there are a few people waving their hands if you can get it across to them or if the basket is passed you can just drop it praise the name of the Lord Hallelujah. I believe in this ministry and I believe in what God is doing through his servant, Pastor Shaolan, his dear wife, and the entire leadership. Please bring out your seeds, your tithe, vows, whatever covenant connection points you have with God. And please rise on your feet. Let's just honor this prayer one last time. Those in the overflows that we have, uh, is everyone ready? The advantage of giving is that words be spoken upon your seeds, not just that you drop an offering. Hallelujah. He says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, so that ye having sufficiency in all things, he said that you may abound unto every good work. Therefore, I pray in the name that is above all names, standing in faith with God's servant, I decree and I declare over your life that these seeds that you are bringing before the Lord, may these seeds become ladders for you in the realm of the Spirit. They will become systems of elevation that will lift you to the next level financially. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all tithers, we declare that your heavens remain opened in the name of Jesus. And for all who are giving here on ground and all who are connecting across the globe i decree and declare that your blessing will not elude you your seed will speak for you in the days of adversity may the lord bless your giving and bless your hearts and bless your hands may they remain strong wealth will not go away from you the wisdom and the creative ideas to continue to multiply and replenish may god make it available for you in jesus name i pray Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. While the ushers are doing that, while the apostle was ministering, I saw something. There is a lady here. This was not a dream. Somebody appeared to you and hit you. And this terrible disease started from that time. When it was ministry, God was already touching you, but you might need a kind of affirmation. And I want you to ask you to come forward. Now, now let me give a warning again. This is not I dreamt and then uh, saw somebody. This is real. I just saw it like a flash while it was ministering. So real. And that thing brought something to your body. Now, I wouldn't say this except that I just, I was led, I was should let this meeting end without, your heart is crying. And something began from that day. Please come forward quickly, as quickly as we can. We have to end right now. It's a lady I saw. A lady. Whether outside or inside. Please just come as quickly as you can. Time is running. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. I'm sorry I'm not going to ask people to close their eyes. Please, if you are coming, come quickly. Just make it very fast. It's a... Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. That happened to you. Where is the affliction? Every part of you. That is one. There is someone else. Yes, sir. Um, sorry to have to cut, Pastor. Somebody slept with you. Somebody came to your room. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Uh, the Lord brought her. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like three years ago. Somebody come to you. Somebody came. Hold on. And did something to you. To your body. 
and you are now you don't even know what is wrong with you hold on I want to pray for you two things you have to be free from offense and anger listen just listen I'm talking to you so that God will help you you understand and then for these ones that have come I believe that can I pray for them sir I want to pray for you if I don't pray for you I'm not a prophet of doom but I'm seeing you inside a coffin is the grace of God because you've had dreams you've seen yourself in a coffin can I pray for you in the name of Jesus I decree and declare look at me my dear I command that spirit that devil of darkness to live your life now in the name of Jesus let there be restoration the power of God is coming on you now I curse that spirit let her go now every planting that is not of God in your body I declare be free you can see how emaciated she is you would think that she has some kind of things let there be a restoration now and then for the ones who are here based on what the man of God said I agree with you right now we join our faith and we declare everything that has brought evil to your life by the power that raised Christ from the dead be delivered from it now in the name of Jesus Christ from tonight your restoration begins experience the joy that comes with the miraculous Amen. in Jesus name I pray Amen. hallelujah